Low dose aspirin kidney disease. You are watching a production of GoodHealthTube.com. Before we move on and talk about low dose aspirin, we recommend you watch the entire video as later we will mention a program that may allow you to reverse your kidney disease. This is quite controversial in the eyes of mainstream medicine, but let's get back to talking about aspirin. In attempting to answer whether or not people with kidney disease should take low dose aspirin, we will define what low dose aspirin is. Low dose aspirin is 81 mg a day. This is commonly known as baby aspirin. Ideally, it should be taken with food and be enteric coated. These maneuvers minimize the potential of aspirin causing any stomach ulcers. In answering the question of whether or not people should take low dose aspirin with kidney disease, the answer is possibly, and this should be individualized by talking to your doctor. The whole point of taking aspirin is to thin out your blood and decrease the chances of heart attack and stroke. Taking low-dose aspirin has been shown to decrease the incidence of these two illnesses. However, aspirin belongs to a class of medication known as NSAIDs, or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications. These medications are known to directly stress the kidneys. On the other hand, chronic kidney disease can be a risk factor for stroke and heart attack. So what is the answer? According to a study that was published in October of 2021 that analyzed data sets of patients, taking low-dose aspirin for patients with pre-dialysis chronic kidney disease resulted in a higher incidence of death and an earlier need for dialysis. The authors of this study recommended more randomized control trials to further investigate this questions. Another study also published in 2021 in Scientific Reports also appears to demonstrate an increased adverse outcome of taking aspirin with chronic kidney disease, particularly in patients who weighed less than 60 kilograms. A study reported in clevelandclinic.org in November of 2022 suggested that although the benefits of reducing the risk of heart attack and stroke are questionable, the taking of low-dose aspirin in kidney disease does not worsen kidney function. There is an ongoing study as of this video known as the ATT&CK trial to assess the benefits of low-dose aspirin in chronic kidney disease patients. The study however was interrupted by the pandemic, and results are still pending as of this video publication. The National Kidney Foundation states that, in people with kidney disease, aspirin may increase the tendency to bleed. People who already have reduced kidney function, or other health problems such as liver disease or severe heart failure, should not use aspirin without speaking to their doctor. At this time, the provisional verdict is that taking low-dose aspirin does not seem to help with chronic kidney disease patients. We at GoodHealthTube.com agree with the National Kidney Foundation in that the decision to take low-dose aspirin in the context of kidney disease should at this time be highly individualized and should involve your doctor. Note that the mentioned organizations in this video does not imply endorsement by those organizations. We hope you found this video useful. To learn more about kidney disease, we recommend you check out our blog on kidney disease, the link being located at the top of the video description. We believe this is the best blog on the internet regarding kidney disease for the layman. We believe knowledge is power, particularly when it comes to your health. Within the blog post, you'll find links to our suggested kidney disease reversal program. This is not a scam, and we suggest you find out for yourself. Please like, subscribe, and comment. More valuable videos such as this are in the pipeline, which you can watch in our kidney disease playlist. Hit the notification bell to be notified when more videos become available. This video is not a substitute for consulting a physician. It is not intended as medical advice. It is intended solely for educational and informative purposes. Always consult a healthcare professional before beginning a new health plan. You have been watching a production of goodhealthtube.com. Thanks for watching.